So it proceeds from the starting point that Wikipedia is a very good beginning for research, but there are problems with it. It's a popular attack target. Wikiscanner showed that uh, certain people would like you to think that uh, what's on Wikipedia is the whole truth. And Wikipedia decides we want reliable sources, so that's newspapers, television, that's good. If you control the newspapers and the television, you control Wikipedia. Click, click on the picture. Here's an example. Wikipedia says, oh, it collapsed due to fire at 521. I would say at least that there's room for discussion, but according to Wikipedia, there's no room for discussion. So how do you fit that discussion in? Because Wikipedia is a site that everybody goes to. So what the software does is you install it, you forget it, and then one day, hey, you remember it because it pops up a little suggestion. It's, oh, by the way, there is another opinion here. Click here for somebody else's thoughts about what happened to Seven World Trade Center. So that's what it does. How does it work behind the scenes? It's, yeah, it's quietly, every time you're on Wikipedia, it goes away and it checks against the sites which you said you're interested to know about. Oh, do you know anything about this page? And according to, if it finds one, then it pops up a little button so that you can, uh, you can go there. So it's like, it's adding a little list to the, you might want to go here on the bottom of Wikipedia page, but it's not on Wikipedia, so they can't take it off Wikipedia. So it intercepts the page loads and says, okay, that's the language and that's the page name. Is there an English language site that you've said you're interested in that references this page name? So yes, you have to, it can only go to a site that's ready to receive it because you say, okay, this is my access URL, it's a template. He was on the Seven World Trade Center page. So if that's got a page, it will look like this. So it just sends out a head request, have you got a page? Checks the code, if it's a 404, don't bother. Like if, if there is a page that matches that, it's like, oh, by the way, here's a page that matches that you might be interested in. So how do you get your website ready for this? You choose an access URL. So if you're in a wiki, you might want to dedicate a separate namespace. Okay, this is just incoming access points for people who are using this. You have to include a page name because that's how you vary the access points and then you send that to one of your existing pages. You may include a language code if you've got a multi-language website. Then you go ahead and you make the pages. So every page on your website has to be associated with one particular Wikipedia access point. So if you've got a wiki, that could be just a redirect. If you've got another website, you manage that how you like. I've written a little piece of software, you can just put it in XML. So are you locked into particular websites? No, there's a GUI. You can say, okay, these are the access URLs I'm interested in. So if you enable your website and I say, okay, let's add that to the default install. If you want to uh, configure yours in another way, you say, oh, I'm not interested in that one. Do you just delete that? So yeah, you choose the sites. And what are you doing here? You're tying your website to a particular Wikipedia page. Now, okay, that does take some time, but it's got some value anyway because it's effectively a URI, which Wikipedia, you know, there's a lot. They're pretty comprehensive. They're fairly self-documenting. Just go to the web page. They're easily localized because there's a big list of foreign languages along the side. So you are getting your site ready for a semantic web. Okay, where is the software at the moment? There is a plugin that works for Firefox 3 or more. And what we are looking for is anybody who wants to develop it for IE or Chrome or improve the plugin, or even better, if you've got a website, that's actually the biggest gap because there's a network problem here. So people say, oh, but that only works for a couple of websites. Well, that's up to you. If you've got a website and you'd like some more traffic, then you just match your web pages to the Wikipedia URIs, and then you let me know via email. And there was some contact details somewhere, but you can probably remember the website anyway, wikipediaplus.org. And you could see it going, but I mean, that's, that's no great shakes. Have we got time? Yeah. Okay. So you're here. You can enable it or disable it. It, it does slow it down slightly because I haven't coded it as well as it could be coded. I'm sure of that. But if you enable it, I mean, I, in Bangladesh, it's the right pain, I tell you, but you've got some pretty good bandwidth here. So, okay, it's popped up a little thing. And then it's like, oh, you might wish to go here or here. Click here. You can configure it. It'll, it'll send you there or it'll open it in a new tag or whatever. Um, so there's a little bit of configuration you can do, and yeah, that's something else. And yeah, you know, are you interested in this website? Well, that's one that it comes with by default because I liked it. But if you'd like, if you have a website and you'd like yours to be packaged in on the list of default websites it could go to, then yeah, Wikipedia enable it and contact me. Thank you. Any questions?
think that's it. That's it. Okay, thanks. Thank you.